Hi. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Vidra and I am through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2024. And I thought it would be a really fun idea to actually do a little bit of a Q&A to get to know me a little bit more and answer a lot of those questions that you might have. I put out like a little Q&A post on Instagram on my stories and I got a lot of really fun questions that I thought would be awesome to answer for you all. So we're gonna get into that right now. For those of you that don't know what the PCT is or what it stands for, it is the Pacific Crest Trail. It's a 2,650 mile hike from the border of Mexico to Canada. It takes roughly about five months to complete depending on what you average in miles. Um, and you're basically like doing a lot of multi-day backpacking trips essentially <laughs> um, in order to make those five months to get to the Canadian border. So the first question is why am I hiking the Pacific Crest Trail? And I think this is probably the most important question of them all. And everyone says to have a really solid why. So I'm gonna answer that first. The reason why I'm going to be hiking the Pacific Crest Trail is for an independence journey. I have been with my partner now for close to 10 years and I have become pretty reliant on him over those years. And for me, I wanted to go out there and push my boundaries and become a little bit more of an independent person while also getting outside and doing something that I love, which is hiking um, and being in the outdoors because it really helps me a lot with kind of my anxiety and overthinking and things like that. So I thought it'd be a really fun <laughs> opportunity for me to grow as a woman myself and become a little bit more independent and also get to experience the outdoors in the meantime. Another portion of my why is I used to be an athlete. Back in the day, about six years ago, I played collegiate basketball for five years and I was a very competitive athlete and had a lot of drive throughout those five years of my life. And after graduating and moving on into, I guess, adulthood, um, I've kind of lost that drive within me, that competitive drive. I haven't found something in the last few years that really pushes me and wants me to be like the best, best version of myself. So I thought because I love being outside and getting out doors that hiking the Pacific Rush Trail would be the ultimate challenge to kind of push myself physically and mentally um, and see what I'm capable of again, especially approaching into my 30s. I don't want like age to kind of like define me and be like, I can't do anything as I get older. Like I want to stay young and I want to do things that I love and kind of just keep pushing myself to be the best version of myself. So. <laughs> The third reason why I'm doing the Pacific Crest Trail is to inspire others to get out there and do what they love. As an anxious individual, I have definitely allowed my anxiety and fear to limit me or get in the way of pursuing things that I'm really passionate about or love. So as I approach my 30s, I really wanted to challenge myself and also inspire others who are watching because I know and I've chatted with you know some people online who say that it is something that they feel as well is that crippling anxiety and fear to basically like leave their house um, as a solo female and or just like a female in general because you know the world is scary and I definitely can relate to people who are feeling that type of way so I wanted to kind of be the person who can inspire others to just kind of go out there, get after it and do things that they love and just kind of push past those fears and anxiety and kind of, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Second question was, what is my biggest fear going into the PCT? And to be quite honest, I have a lot of fears going into the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, one being solo, I'm doing it alone. Um, and I'm not really quite sure what to expect out of that because I've never done a hike alone. Um, whether that's a day hike, a backpacking hike, or a through hike. And a through hike in general, I've never done, but I have actually done some multi-day backpacking, I guess is what you would qualify it as. So I have been out there hiking for six days total. 
but I've never actually done it alone. So my biggest fear is just being solo in general and maybe a couple examples I can think of that have been intrusive thoughts are <laughs> maybe running into someone who has ill intentions potentially while I'm out kind of close to the roads or in towns um, and running into that a little bit. Another fear of mine is running into an animal on the trail, which I've heard is not necessarily going to happen, but it can happen while you're out on the trail, especially being um, out there for five months. It is a big fear of mine to maybe run into a bear or a cougar. And I think this is like a fear of most people is having that interaction and maybe not necessarily knowing what to do um, with that. And the third fear that I actually have is the fear of not finishing because I am being so open about my journey and putting it out online. I do fear that, you know, if I get a month or two in and it's maybe not necessarily what I thought it was going to be, or, you know, God forbid, I get an injury that I can't complete the whole entire journey and I would feel like a failure, <laughs> I guess, um, because, for me i've always played sports growing up so if i never you know if i didn't like win or i didn't complete something or i wasn't the best at something um, i would always kind of get in my head and i think that might be one of my bigger fears going into the pct is that not finishing and then like maybe letting people down or letting myself down and getting in my head about that so this third question actually came from a few people they asked what am I most excited about on the Pacific Crest Trail? And that is a very good question. Um, I don't really know what to expect, but I will say I am really excited about seeing all the beautiful landscapes and views. That's one of my favorite things out hiking is getting to the top of a mountain um, and just seeing the spectacular view and just being absolutely taken back by it. And um, I'm really excited about that. Another thing I'm really excited about is meeting people. Um, I've heard like while you're out there, you can form a tramley is what they call it. Um, so I'm really excited to see like who I meet, who my tramley might be. I'm a pretty sociable person. So um, I think it'll be really fun to get to know a lot of different people that I never would have met had I not gone on this journey. Another thing I'm really excited about actually, and I've watched a lot of YouTubes, just bloggers and gear reviews and things like that but I am really excited to just see all of these like milestones along the way so like that first mile marker some of the the really popular towns that everyone talks about um, specific landmarks like the Eagle Rock uh, hitting the Sierras so I'm just really excited to see all of those things that I've been watching over the years in person I think that'll be so awesome so amazing and I'm really excited about that the fourth question is when am I starting and I am not going to say like that specific day because for safety reasons because I'm going to be vlogging and putting myself out there. I will not say the specific date but I will say that I am starting in April and I will be going, <laughs> I have to think about it, and I will be actually going northbound so I'll be starting in Mexico and heading towards Canada. Number five, how far will I be going each day, like averaging miles? For me, I think I'll start off a little bit smaller, maybe 15 miles to start and then make my way up to an average of 25 miles. It really just will depend on how I feel when I get out there and you know what, what happens. There's a lot of things that could, that could come up with weather and things like that and I will have to kind of adapt and adjust to that but on average I'm hoping to get up to about 25 miles a day. Number six this question is pretty unique but they asked how often will I be seeing my partner Garen and my dogs so why I say that's unique is because we live in a van full-time so we travel and what is awesome about this whole situation is that my partner Garen will be basically traveling alongside me the whole entire time so he'll just meet me at each kind of town destination where we come out um, and he'll basically be driving me into the towns, helping me restock, um, you know, all the things that you would do if you were out there um, in general. But it'll just be nice because basically I'll be seeing them at least once a week and through my zero days as well. And if you don't know what a zero day is, it just means that you're taking essentially one full day off of the trail before you head back out. 
And to touch a little bit more on the hitchhiking part, because that is a big portion of the Pacific Crest Trail is that you have to come out to these roads and then hitchhike <laughs> into towns. And that was one of my other big fears that I didn't touch on that I forgot to touch on. So what is nice about this situation is that <laughs> I do not have to hitchhike. I just have to basically with my Garmin GPS device, just stay in connection with my partner and then he'll essentially know exactly when I'm going to be coming out onto the roads and then he can just pick me up and bring me into the town and I don't have to worry about potentially getting in with like a creeper or anything like that so that was one of the big reasons for me being okay as a solo female out there is knowing that I'm going to get a lift from my partner or someone that I'm familiar with. Question number seven is how am I affording to take this much time off and do this trail for five months? So my journey is going to look a little bit more unique than a lot of others and I actually will be making money while I'm on the trail and there's two ways that I'm doing that. The first is just keeping my job that I already have as a marketing manager and I'm basically just setting up and automating a lot of these systems so that while I'm out there, it's working in the background, I don't have to worry about it. And then my partner, who's also a marketing manager, will be helping me with more of the manual work, uh, like social posts and customer service things. So everything will be running essentially as I would normally day to day. And that's just kind of the ways that we are working around that. So my partner will be taking kind of like half of my workload and I'm setting up and automating the other half so that I will be making money while I'm on the journey. For most people, they will just be basically quitting their jobs and taking this much time off. When they are on this tr journey, they're going into towns and they're relaxing and hanging out. Whereas when I go into towns, I won't have the luxury of doing that. I'll actually have to come off and basically be working my whole zero day, which is like, you know, a complete day off the trail. Um, so it will definitely be a grind, but for me, it was nice knowing and gives me a bit more peace of mind that I will be making money while I'm out there and I don't have to come off and try to find a job afterwards. The second way that I'll actually be making money while on the trail is by content creation. So I've always wanted to be a content creator and make it more of my full-time gig. So while I was prepping for the Pacific Crest Trail, I actually reached out to some brands um, and started making some video content for them. And luckily was able to kind of create some partnerships out of that. One being a food sponsorship, so they will be actually sending me dehydrated meals the whole entire time, which is amazing. Um, and all I have to do is basically create content for them in return. The other way is through my uh, sleeping system that I'm actually gonna be bringing on the trail. They will be basically paying me while I'm out there to create content for them. And I will essentially kind of be their like hiker of the year, I guess, in a way, and we'll be working with them closely throughout the trail. The eighth question is a lot of people were asking me about gear in general, and I will preface by saying that I plan to do a full gear breakdown for everyone, and that will go into more details on all of the items that I'm going to be bringing in weight and things like that. Um, but I will kind of touch base a little bit about gear, and I will say that I have definitely invested in some of my pieces of gear just to make it a little bit lighter while I'm out there and things like that. But I will say that I didn't go with like the ultimate light gear as well. So I'm kind of like in between. <laughs> I'd say I have some light pieces, but not ultra light pieces. So for me, I actually had to buy like all brand new gear. And it was kind of a funny story because we're from Canada and because we're traveling in the van through the US, <laughs> Um, all of my backpacking gear was back at home and I didn't have the time or the finances really to fly back or drive back and grab all those pieces of gear before the PCT. Uh, so I actually just went to REI <laughs> through these last like few months and bought all new pieces of gear. So some of the brands that I actually went with and I'll just kind of touch base on like the big three, I guess. Uh, is the tent, which is the Nemo Hornet Osmo two person tent. And I'm I might actually have a ch opportunity to try the Durston X Mid Pro tent, which is I think the one person one. So we'll see how that goes throughout the journey. And my sleeping system is actually through Zen Bivy. And they provided me a light bed, a flex air mattress, a light sheet, 
and a pillow for the journey. So I'm really excited about that. And the backpack, which is a Deuter air contact bag. It's a 45 plus 10 liter, which is 55 liters total. And I love that bag. A lot of people go with kind of the really ultralight stuff. As mentioned, I did some ultralight, but light and the Deuter for me is like four pounds, but it's really comfortable. Um, and I think you sometimes have to sacrifice weight for comfortability. So that's what I did with the bag. It fits me really well and being kind of like a bit more of a curvy lady, <laughs> if you will. Um, I really like it, it's very comfortable. And for shoes, I'll touch a little bit on the shoes. I am going with the Ultra Lone Peak 7s, I believe. I'll have to figure that out in the next video. But yeah, Ultra Lone Peaks running shoes. And then I also am going with Ultra Shoe, Ultra High Top Shoes. So those are the two shoes that I'm probably gonna kind of be switching in and out. I thought use the running shoes through like the desert sections and in Oregon and things like that. And then when I go into like the mountains, like Sierras and the San Juan um, Peak that I would use the boots instead. All right, question number nine, and this is for the ladies. How am I dealing with my period while on the trail? That is a real thing um, for me. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can deal with your period while you're on the trail. You can do like diva cups, tampons. Um, you might have a IUD, I would think is what it's called. And that limits you from getting like your, your flow and things like that. Um, but for me personally, I'm going to be taking tampons while on the trail like I normally do in my everyday life. Um, I'll just be packing in while, well actually let me preface that, I have a, an app that's called Flow and it'll tell me, you know, a week before when I'm expected to have my period and a few days. So I'll kind of just like base off when I'm going to grab tampons prior just to make sure that if I do get it on the trail, um, I'm not gonna have like no tampons and then I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be a mess. Um, so I'm going to just go based off of the Flow app, bring tampons and then just kind of pack in, pack out like you would with your food, throw it into a Ziploc bag and pack it out. And that's what I'm gonna be doing with my period. <laughs> question number 10, and this will be the last question of the Q&A is what am I doing for safety? So for me, Safety is huge because I'm going to be out there alone. And like I said, I don't have the experience of being out there hiking alone. So I'm probably gonna start off with obviously a Garmin GPS device. And this is to essentially be able to have the people in my life <laughs> track me along the whole entire journey, but also to be able to message them in the morning, afternoon and evenings and just letting them know that I am okay. Um, so the Garmin GPS device I'm going to be br bringing. Another safety tool that I'm going to be bringing is bear spray. And I don't know how long I'll take it. I think I'm going to probably bring it the whole entire time because I just like sleeping with it in my tent, knowing that if, you know, animal were to come around or whatever, I can have something that'll basically protect me. So I will be carrying a bear spray. And then the third safety tool that I will be bringing is kind of like a little mini knife again just for peace of mind you know while i'm sleeping out there god forbid a animal decides to attack me <laughs> i have a bear spray and a knife and i just feel a little bit better bringing those three things while i'm out there so i hope that some of these answers helped you out in some type of way or maybe you got to know me a little bit better I am going to actually be vlogging the whole entire PCT. So if you love watching vlogs, um, you should definitely stay <laughs> and hang out with me because I'm going to be kind of posting those throughout throughout the journey, as well as sharing shorter vlogs on all social channels like Instagram and TikTok, YouTube shorts, things like that. So with all that being said, you can actually follow me here on YouTube subscribe or you can find me on all social platforms under the route to happiness or at root underscore to happiness on all of these other channels like TikTok and Instagram. And as all people say at the end of their YouTube channels, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. 
it would mean a lot to me and I think you will love following me along this pretty epic journey of the Pacific Crest Trail.